In this video, we hope to show how rather simple it is to join two tubes of different diameter, making them flush at the joint. For our first example, we'll span across two one and a half inch tubes at 90 degrees using a one inch tube. We'll measure the distance from the centers of the larger tubes and cut a one inch tube to that length. We will need to offset our notcher by half the difference of the two diameters before we make any cuts. In this case, the difference is one and a half inch minus one inch is a half an inch, so half of that is one quarter inch. We use a shim to lift the arbor housing by that amount. Insert the one inch tube into the notcher and line up the center of the tube with the center of the hole saw. There is a groove on the top side of the arbor housing which we can use to lay a straight edge across thus making it easy to line up the tube with the hole saw. Flip the tube 180 degrees and make the, sure the feather edge is towards the bottom. Position the tube center line again with the center line of the hole saw and cut the notch. Grind back the feathered edges and we have a very nice fit. For our second example, we'll fit across a 30 degree angle or 120 degrees depending on how you look at it. We'll set our notcher at 120 degrees. We measure the difference from the center line to center line and cut a one inch tube to that length. Position the tube center line again with the center line of the hole saw and make the notch. Flip the tube 180 degrees again, like we did in the first example, and make sure that the feather thin edge is directed towards the bottom. Position the tube center line with the center line of the hole saw. Grind back the feathered edges and we have another nice fit.
In our last example, we'll do something a little more complicated, but it's actually quite simple with a few tips that we'll share. This time, we want to span between tubes out of phase. We'll begin by placing some marks where we want the joints, then measure center line to center line. A trick we use to make sure that we have an accurate center line from which to measure is to rub a straight edge across the marks using each opposing mark as a pivot point. We've set up a tape in place to measure the distance, and while the tape is in place, we'll also measure the angles and designate them A and B. The trick here is always to measure the angle on the left side of the joint using the large tube as the base from which to reference. In doing so, this will assure that when the notcher angle is set, the notching position will be correct regardless of whether the angle is acute or obtuse. As with the other examples, we'll cut the one inch tube to length and notch end A according to the measured angle. Remember to line up the center line of the tube in the hole saw. Before end B is notched, center line will have to be located because it is out of plane in relationship to the other large tube. So to help find the center line, lay up the one inch tube by positioning the notched end into the mark representing joint A. Now we can use the sink notcher center line finder to find center line. Make a tick mark on the tube if you feel confident enough, you can just eyeball it. Place a snap collar onto the tube and line up the tick mark with the 180 degree V. This will now give us a visible target to assure proper positioning of the tube when placed into the notcher. Rotate the tube so that the tick mark is towards the bottom. and set the notcher at the measured B angle. And don't forget to line up the center line of the tube and the hole saw. Grind back the feathered edges and we have a fit as good as any professional can do.